Thank you to Chairs Traeger and Torres for this important hearing and for inviting members with NYCHA developments damaged by Sandy. I'm Councilmember Ben Kalos. I represent the Upper East Side where very low income New Yorkers live in four NYCHA developments. I must note that the mayor's building and garbage dump across the street from Stanley Isaacs where both locations were flooded uh, and deep underwater during Sandy. Two and a half years after Sandy hit New York City, many of our residents are still struggling to recover. Homes were lost and livelihoods destroyed. We all welcome the $3 billion in federal aid we received to help our residents rebuild their homes and their lives. But I, like many, want to know how this money is being spent efficiently and actually reaching those it is intended to help. While I'm encouraged by NYCHA Chair uh, Shola's leadership, NYCHA's track record of allocating money efficiently, particularly with respect to repairs and maintenance, has been deeply troubling. On behalf of Mrs. Bergen, President of Stanley Isaacs Tennis Association and Manhattan South Council of Presidents, I ask about information the NYCHA Sandy Recovery Program Management Office provided with, quote, current estimated allocation necessary for FEMA scope, end quote, of $33,768,108 with construction slated to begin September of this year. Can confirm this allocation, the start date, and share how long it will take to complete these repairs? Do you have the exact ones on the slide, Isaac? So, Councilman, I, I, we, can, we can dig up the exact estimated um, allocation at this particular point for, for each development if, if we need to. Um, I, I do want to caution again, um, as I indicated in my testimony, the exact amount of funding from FEMA is somewhat dependent on insurance proceeds as an example. Um, so some of these monies um, or some of these figures are subject to change um, a little bit up or a little bit down depending on, uh, depending on the insurance proceeds. So I, I can confirm that the, the projected allocation for that development is 33768000 million. Uh, the estimated construction start is September of this year. Um, I'd like to just mention one thing, because uh, this is a perfect example of the, the success that we've had over this past year with FEMA. Originally, Isaac's houses and developments like Isaac's houses were considered the lesser damage. They didn't lose their boilers, they didn't lose their electrical systems, and what FEMA was proposing was very minimal uh, repairs. Now, with the mitigation, the, the, the resiliency measures that, that, can, that come from FEMA funding cannot exceed the amount of the repairs. So when FEMA was proposing very few repairs, that meant that, that these developments would get very little resiliency work as well. We were able to convince FEMA and make the case that these developments needed more repairs than they were uh, uh, looking to provide at the beginning. And from that, we've been able to increase the resiliency, and which resulted in Isaac's houses will have backup power generators, which has been mentioned today, but very briefly. And I think this is a really important game-changing moment for NYCHA. NYCHA damaged developments for the first time in its history will have full power permanent backup, a backup a power generators. That wouldn't have been possible a year ago. So over the course of this year, through these negotiations with FEMA, we've been able to, to raise the bar as far as the amount of resiliency that can be done. So Isaac's houses will have full power backup, uh, which is if you ask residents about the Sandy experience and how different that experience would have been had they not lost power, that would have made all the difference in the world. So I think that the fact that these developments are going to get that backup power is, is a really important thing, and I just didn't want to let it go without you know, bringing that up. Th thank you for your advocacy, and just to clarify, there seems to be a, a difference in opinions between you and your colleague. So is that $33 million that's estimated uh, when will that no longer be an estimate? When can we count on that? When will that be budgeted? Uh, and when will that work be complete? When we have the signed LOU from FEMA. And when will that happen? I, again, I, I want to I be clear, right? The, you, you asked for when will we know the exact number. We will not, even with the signed LOU, we will not know the exact number until we resolve the insurance proceeds because that will impact how much FEMA money we get. And when will the insurance proceeds be resolved? We don't know. 
so it's it's two and a half years. Is it another year, another five the years, ten years? The, the negotiations with FEMA, with the insurance companies, continue, right? As Councilmember Traeger pointed out, there has been some progress, but we are not near our cap with the insurance companies. The only thing, however, to be clear, the only thing that it will hold up is the the final accounting of how much comes from FEMA and how much comes from insurance. It will not hold up the actual start of construction. So we have worked with FEMA. Again, another example of the progress that we've been able to make with FEMA. We have worked with FEMA where we will be using estimated insurance proceeds on those LOUs in order to enable us to be able to proceed with the construction. Thank you for uh, being able to proceed with the construction in September, despite being unsure exactly where the funding will come from, whether FEMA or insurance. Do you know how long the construction will take? For that particular development? I don't have it. It, 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 varies, it varies by development. Um, generally, construction will take between 18 and 36 months to complete. Great. Uh, and then, um, just in wrapping up, I have uh, one question with a follow up, perhaps. Uh, it, it's hard to ignore 10 story two block long garbage dump being built in a flood zone across the street from Stanley Isaac. So I have to ask whether any of the resiliency or fortifications are being planned to include protection for NYCHA residents who will undoubtedly have uh, wastewater, waste uh, in the flood water uh, coming in. Um, so will the resiliency protect people from garbage water? So, so the, the, the resiliency measures that are being proposed, flood walls, flood gates type scenario, don't discriminate between seawater and garbage water, as you described it? Or wastewater. Um, so, so um, yes, the, the, the resiliency measures that are designed to keep water out of buildings will keep water out of buildings. Thank you very much, and thank you to the chairs.